we just may throw a surprise or two at you. Fear the beard? There will be a few takeaways from this edition, ones you want to celebrate with your teammates and all of your friends. It's in the net! Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. And another fun edition tonight. We got a lot of good we stuff to so. show. Yeah, we absolutely. So. Hey, well, some, it's going to be fun for you and I. So some, that's fun, all that matters. Really. Some definitely some fun stuff to talk about. And uh, really in the midst of uh, the schedule now and before you know it, we're going to be talking about playoffs. The tennis team uh, just has a, a couple of contests left before they head into sections. So, obviously, tennis starts and, and ends before anyone else in the in the uh, fall schedule. Uh, but it's you know, as I was putting the graphics together, really, is that really their last two regular season contests? Wow. It but goes fast. It does. We will start with the football team. The Cardinals hit the road last week, take on Elk River. But because their field isn't finished, the game was held in Zimmerman. This would be another huge test for the Cardinals. The Elks were 1-1 one one following a loss to Andover, but they had racked up almost 650 rushing yards in just two games. So if they hope to win, the Cardinals would have to find a way to stop their incredible ground game. First quarter, Elks on the move at midfield. P.J. Bono takes the carry to the left, breaks free, and he is off to the races. A 50-yard gallop opens the scoring and puts Elk River in control, and they just keep coming. Got a lot of different guys who can carry the rock this time. It's Dylan Rogers getting through the defense and sprinting to the paint. A 53-yard score. Elk River up 16-0 still in the first quarter. Cooper Rapids has a guy that's pretty good on the ground as well. David Gibley breaks through late in the first quarter for an 18-yard touchdown, but it's 16-6 Elks after one. Elks added a couple more scores early in the second, so Cardinals down 32-6 when Josh Dubois goes deep over the middle, connects with Kai John Cummings Coleman. A 31-yard hookup gets the Cardinals into Elk River territory. That leads to another Cardinal score. Dubois scrambling, able to hit Jared Fearing in the flat. He cuts back, gets to the end zone for a 17-yard touchdown. Still, though, in a big hole at 32-13. Elks get that one right back, though, on the ensuing kick. Bono takes it from the six, heads to the middle of the field, makes one man miss, then gets behind his blockers. Bono able to shake off a hit near the sidelines right there. And he's just going to keep the engine rolling. Goes 94 yards on the return. Elk River in front, 40-13. Cardinals not ever able to threaten the lead, but they do find the end zone a few more times. Dubois heaving one deep downfield and finding Cummings Coleman wide open. The 40 yard touchdown made it 54 to 19. Cards get a couple of TDs in the fourth quarter, but fall heavily. 68 to 33 was the final. Bono, was it, wasn't he in U2? Oh, it was Bono. Same spelling. Same spelling. But uh, yeah, that's, it, it, they ran all over. They ran all over. They them did. And, yeah. and Elk River, you know, it'd been a few years since the Cardinals had played the Elks going back yep. to when uh, they were both still in the Northwest Suburban uh, and then switched classes. Uh, but they are so good at deception and pre-snap <laughs> movement that it's like a hide the shell game and you don't know who's running. They run uh, in each of their games. They've run, run the ball with at least nine different running back it really throws the defense off and you can try and prepare for that but it, it really is difficult I think they ran for at least 400 yards I think it was a little over 400 yards on Friday night against Coon Rapids and that's a lot of that's a lot of yards on the ground for for anybody to give up in one game but I think it was just under 400 or, or but it was close a lot. to 400 it was a it lot. was close to 394 I yeah well it's almost 400 yeah they the the Cardinals will host Rogers on Friday and then they get a week off in the middle of the season before traveling to take on Andover on the 8th. And the great news is, Howie, on Friday, we'll be there, finally. And then, unfortunately, we'll have a week off as well and miss another week of football, which is tough for us during football it, season. It is tough for uh, us. But uh, then we will also be at Andover uh, to see the Cardinals and the Huskies, a rematch of last year's section championship, which their, should be fun. Their next two games are going to be difficult, both Rodgers and Andover, and especially Andover. They're really good. Andover uh, thumped Rodgers, I believe, last Friday night. So it's it's going to be a couple of difficult matchups. But, you know, I was at practice today. I had an opportunity to see the guys, and, and I didn't get to talk to, uh, to, to Nick. But, you know, you can see that the attitude was good. Um, I saw Dubois, Dubois was throwing the ball really well in practice. But uh, we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting. 
Well, a tennis team, as I mentioned earlier, almost wrapping up their regular season. A couple of big matches against top teams in the section last week, starting off with Rodgers. They lost to the Royals 7-0, all of them dropping in straight sets. There are some of the scores. Gabby Newton, 2-6, 0-6 at first singles. Abby Ness, 1-6, 1-6 at second singles. The doubles teams kept their matches a little bit closer, but all, as I mentioned, fall in straight sets. Well, the tennis team hosted a round-robin tournament at the Bob Pivot Courts on Saturday. But first, they went head-to-head -head with Crosstown rival Blaine on Friday. The Bengals are having a great season, and the Cardinals were without captain and first doubles player Kelsey Goldman. Still, it'd be a great test for the Cardinals' young squad to see how they can match up with a tough Blaine lineup. Freshman Gabby Newton has proven herself at first single position for the Cardinals all year long. Even against more experienced and stronger players, she had battled hard for every point. Her strong backhand is a key to her game and helps her win this point, but she loses 2-6, 1-6. Abby Ness playing at second singles for the Cardinals on Friday, showing a strong backhand and great, great cross court that led to a Bengal miss hit. But Ness falls in straight sets, 1-6, 1-6. Brooklyn knee neighbor has been a great addition to the team this season after losing the first set 1-6. She battled back in the second to make it closer, but eventually loses 4-6 in the second. Jennifer Carlson serving for the Cardinals at four singles. Nice touch on the drop shot coming up that leads to a miss hit by her Bengals opponent. Carlson loses though 3-6, 0 6 with Goldman out in the lob of the lineup, Mary Olson and Zoe Sheck are elevated to first doubles, and they play the closest match of the day. Strong play at the net coming up here. You saw, but a, they drop a tough one. It's 5 7 2 6. Emily Nicholas teamed up with Lily Newton at second doubles against Blaine. Nicholas takes care of this point on her own, but the Cardinals do also falls in straight sex, sets 2 6 0 oh, 6. Carly uh, Hafferman and Caitlin Caminetti are the Cardinals in third doubles court. Really nice play at the net right here. Forces a long lob from the Bengals. But Blaine sweeps up, handing the cards a 1-6, 2-6 loss at third doubles. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough when you have a young team, and we talked about it earlier in the in the season. They have a number of young players. They do, they do. have a strong group of seniors, but they lost a, a strong senior class. Uh, so a little bit of a rebuilding year. But in his write-up, Coach, uh, Coach Stark talking about uh, the resiliency they've shown, the character they've shown playing out the points, yep. the improvements he's seeing. It's important. Um, and, you know, again, you have uh, Gabby Newton, just a freshman at first singles, is going to be there for a while. Uh, and, and they're hoping uh, the younger players who are going to be here uh, next year and beyond are getting valuable lessons, playing in a very tough uh, conference and section and, and obviously facing um, some outstanding opponents. They saw some more great uh, teams when they hosted the Cardinal Classic on Saturday. Started with Delano. Tigers hand them another 7-0 loss. Uh, they faced off against St. Francis. Uh, got one victory. It came from Jennifer Carlson playing a three, third single, 6-3, 6-2. And then a big win to finish the day against a conference opponent. And again, in, in a 4-3 match, they scored the win, and that's always big as we talk about. Uh, Gabby Newton getting a win, 6-2, 6-1 at first singles. Goldman played singles and won 6-4, 7-5. Abby Ness also getting a win in three sets at third singles. Olsen and Sheck clinching the deal with a 6-1, 3-6, 10-8 win in the third third or in the first doubles spot just five wins on the season but I think uh, coach Stork would say this is better than a five win team and you know they've dropped a number of four three decisions as well and, they, and they've and they've they've been outplayed in others as uh, again but I think that they're better than a five win team yeah and they've got some some tough matches coming up they host Centennial on Thursday and then uh, host Park Center next Tuesday and then the la the season will end the regular season will end with the crossover match uh, after that and then it's on to uh, tournament play uh, and we'll see where they're seated obviously yep. in a tough section uh, they'll probably have a low lower seed uh, probably have to travel uh, in that opening round and will probably face a very tough opponent right away volleyball team last Monday as we were sitting on the set they were playing and they were scoring their first win under their new head coach. After dropping the first set to St. Francis, 25-12, Cardinals came back to win 25-21, 25-18, and 25-22.
So nice to see them get the win. And the Cardinals were back home on Thursday, welcoming a daunting opponent from Centennial. Cougars came in at 5-3, but they were 0-1 in conference play, so they would be hungry to even their record in the Northwest Suburban. Cardinals were ready for the challenge and would push hard to try to get their first conference victory of the season. Rookie coach Janine Crooks getting her team pumped up before they take the court. Some good things for the Cardinals early on. Solid serve, receive, and turn here. Bella Bresnahan gets the kill in the middle. But the Cougars control the scoreboard most of the night. They set up in their middle. Big power right here from Linnea Swenson helps Centennial to a 25-11 victory in the first set. Cardinals down early in the second, but trying to keep themselves close. Michaela Wilbur gets the kill from midcourt. She had a team high 14 digs to go with three kills in the match. Unfortunately, the Cougars keep coming like a freight train. They can attack from midcourt as well. Cassie Sosinski finds the floor. It's another 25-11 Centennial win in the second. Cougars trying to close it out. Cardinals fighting to stay alive in the third. Centennial attack is picked up. Amelia Fredrickson getting the kill in the middle for the Cardinals. That's actually Chloe Hoffman. Coon Rapids able to keep it a little closer in the third, but not able to break through. Match point. Centennial comes up with a big stuff on the attack by Bresnahan. Cougars take the third 25-16, make it an early night at the Fieldhouse. Yeah, it's obviously a, a tough loss, but Centennial is very good. They are, and even better teams on the horizon. Yes, well, the volleyball team started this week with a huge challenge, hosting the conference-leading Rogers Royals. The Royals had ripped off 14 straight wins since starting the season with two losses. They have a lot of different weapons, both offensively and defensively, and they would make the Cardinals work on every single point. Coon Rapids keeping the score close early in the first set. Good turn on this point. They set up Bella Bresnahan on the right side, and she leaves no doubt on the attack. But the Royals started rolling midway through and built a lead that would take them to the end. Freshman Anna Schmidt, with the big part of the Rogers attack, gets one of her nine kills match. Royals win 25-11. Cardinals able to keep the pace deeper into the second set as the team traded points back and forth. Huge stuff for Bresnahan in the middle. This one is tied as late as 11 all. But then the Royals started to roar again and put together a nice streak. They went up, they set up Allison Ritter for the power from the left side. Right here, as you saw, Rogers pulls away for the 25-16 win. Cardinals trying to avoid the sweep in the third. This point starts with a couple of quick passes over the net. Cardinals were set up sophomore Soraya Rye. She gets a power kill and a powerful left hand. Coon Rapids fighting an uphill battle throughout. And in the end, the Royals have just too much power from too many players. Taylor Dawson putting the hammer down here. The Royals make it a very quick night with a 25-10 win in set number three. Yeah, pretty impressive yeah, lineup from Rodgers. So. And they're pretty young. Yeah. Uh, Anya Schmidt a, leads the state in, in aces. She has over it's 80 it's aces amazing. already. Uh, and I think she's like 20 or 30 ahead of second place. Pretty good. Uh, she's, according, she's a good to, according to Volleyball Hub, she's just a freshman. Yep. But they racked up something like 15 aces in the match last night. Uh, but they were they were impressive uh, just all the way across the board. Uh, Dawson, who got the kill, the last kill on the highlight, didn't play until the third oh, set. Oh, she didn't. So they yep. go a little deeper into the bench in the third uh, set, and they're still incredibly strong. So uh, it's a good barometer for the Cardinals to look at and say that's oh, that's where we need to be exactly uh, to have that much consistency and and you know just across the board have that much talent now 15 wins in a row for them they're yeah. they're impressive well the Cardinals uh, road doesn't get any easier there at Maple Grove on Wednesday they will host Champlain Park next Wednesday Swimming and diving team, a couple of events last week, starting with the battle for supremacy at Northdale Middle School Pool. Cardinals come up just short against the Bengals, losing 96 to 82. Ella Hacker, first place in both of her individual events, both the 50 free and the 500 free. Jinkoska was first place on uh, off the board with a 142.60. Smith Jeanette in third place, not far behind with a 140. And remember, we talked about it last week. Smith Jeanette just a freshman. So great to see youth in the program doing well. Laura McCarr was third place in the 200 free. Emma Schmidt took fourth in the 200 IM. And the 400 relay team was second place with a time of sub 400. On Saturday, the Cardinals were at the Maroon and Gold Invite, finished ninth place. Uh, and this is a huge tournament. So that's 
a little below midway. Uh, I can't remember how many teams there were, like 14, 15 teams. So a little bit below uh, the middle of the pack. But Ella Hacker, a first place finish in the 100 uh, fly, uh, Butterfly, a second place finish in the 200 IM. That's pretty impressive stuff uh, when you consider the level of competition. I believe she was also part of both of those freestyle relay teams. 200 finished in second, 400 finished in fifth. Uh, Michaela D'Souza was 11th place in the 50 free with Laura McCard just a couple of spots behind her. And look at the diving. Jacosa finished in 14th place. I believe she's a junior. Smith Jeanette, the freshman, was in 16th place. And then senior captain Claire Hartung was in 17th place. Uh, so nice to see them getting depth off the springboard uh, as well, especially with some of those younger girls that are newer to the program. We didn't get our usual email from Coach Donaldson this week. He said he was really busy at work. and So basically it was just a couple of sentences and the results. We'll forgive you this one time, Donaldson, just this one time. <laughs> just this I, look one time. I look forward to reading his stuff because he's so upbeat. And, and, and still, in those couple of sentences, he said, I like what they're doing. They're yep. working really yep, hard. Their the yep. times are coming down. Their form looks really good. So, you know, even in a brief, he gave us a Twitter version of, exactly. of, the, of the email this week. And it was still pure positivity and uh, still very excited about while they haven't seen, uh, you know, victory yet. Uh, they are making the improvements they need to. And as we talk about with everyone, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Right. As long as they're swimming, especially with individual sports, tennis, uh, swimming, uh, gymnastics, any, any of those, as long as each of them is doing better, and really any team sport too. Sure. If you're doing better at the end, playing better at the end, than you were at the beginning, that's a success. Yeah, you, you're improving your your either your times or whatever it is every each and every week. That that is definitely a win. Well, the Cardinals will host Centennial on Thursday, and then they will be at Elk River, or they will host Elk River next Thursday. Cross country team has a couple of huge events coming up this week. A good uh, a good warm up for those was the uh, Applejack invite down in Lakeville last. Uh, it was that on Friday? Um, boys and girls both finished in 18th place for the boys. Peyton Martinick was their top finisher in 73rd with Aaron Casey in 93rd. Joey Dunn finished 128th. Josh Thowen in 150th. And Hazelwood was right behind him. Uh, there was just like a half a second between those last two guys. Girls also finished in 18th place. L Lila Gilliard was their top finisher in 82nd. Julie Headland finished 120th. Cochiarella was in 150th with uh, Kayla Lowe right behind her in 151st. And then Amelsburg rounds out the top five with a 154th place finish. And it, coming up on Friday is the Roy Griak invite. Uh, this is an event that was canceled last year yep, huge. due to COVID. Um, it is something that the athletes really look forward to each year. Um, and so they are very excited to be there. Then the Malacca Mega Meet is on Saturday. And I assume that the Mega Meet, which they competed in last year as well, I assume this year's Mega Meet will be back to the way it is. I which would imagine. It is the largest Nordic, or Nordic, uh, the longest, uh, largest cross country, high school cross country event in the country. So it is gigantic. Last year, they ran it in groups of like four or five teams. Uh, this year, I, I, I'm assuming it will be back to normal. Um, and these are a couple of events that on, on the website, on his blog, Coach uh, Green was talking about the great experience it is for the kids to get, find out what it's like to really run in big, huge packs and try and you know keep themselves in that those front groups there's a reason they call it the mega meet because it is it is definitely the largest moving on to the soccer squads the soccer teams had a trio of games on the schedule last week starting with a visit from crosstown rival blaine on tuesday cardinals boys team is off to an amazing start this season entering the game at three and one including two and zero at home bengals meanwhile had been inconsistent and came in with a three and three record Cardinals wanted to jump on them early and keep them down if possible so they could stay undefeated on their home turf. Bengals bringing the pressure in the first half. Gerson Caballero down the right wing gets off a strong shot, but a diving save by Luke Rising. 
keeps the game scoreless. Late in the half, you can Harmon using his speed down the wing. Draws the defense, sets it up for Yaya Sidibe, and Yaya doesn't miss. One touch to the back of the net, and the Cardinals get the, the break up 1-0. Harmon just takes over in the second. Off the corner kick, Harmon gets the handle, finds himself just a little bit of room, spins and scores. That gave Coon Rapids a two-goal lead just over five minutes into the second half. Bengals looking for an answer. Jack Moore able to get it to a good spot and fire on goal, but another diving save by Rising. Clearly was rising to the challenge. More offense from the home squad. Sidibe gets control, feeds Harmon splitting the defense. Goalie challenges, but no chance as Yukin nets his second of the game. And the lead grows to three. And Harmon wasn't done. Off a free kick by Kish, Harmon charges in. Takes it away just in front of the keeper, completing his hat trick. Three goals and an assist for Yukon Harmon as the Cardinals blank the Bengals 4-0. He is fun to watch. I, I just was handed some breaking news. Yukon Harmon is really good at soccer. He is. He is really good. He is pretty good. And yep. he's fun to watch. He's he is. electric. And it's it's his speed, it's his ball handling, but also his vision. And he, seeing him draw defenders, be aware of that. Yep. And then be able to, to set up his teammates is, He's is outstanding. He's I, we have said for years in a number of different sports, really good players can weave through teams, but great players find ways to help their, their teammates. Absolutely. Makes uh, everybody around you better. It, once, you, once you do that and you can elevate everyone else around you, uh, yeah. It, yeah. And he is absolutely fun to watch. And on... Uh, was it a Thursday? They they played Centennial, got themselves another win, and what do you know? Another goal. You can Harmon added another goal. Yeah, yeah. Sidibe also finding the net. Figueroa had the lone assist. Cardinals beat Centennial 2-1. Unfortunately, their great streak had to eventually come to an end as they were blanked by Tatino Grace on Saturday, losing that one one to nothing. But still, five and two start to the season is fantastic. Big test, big test happening tonight at Champlain Park, taking on the Rebels. They'll be home to face the Osseo Orioles on Thursday. Yeah, it's definitely fun to watch. Well, the girls' soccer team entered last week on one of the greatest streaks this team had seen in years. The Cardinals were 3-0-1 since losing the opener to fourth-ranked Centennial, but even more impressive, they hadn't allowed a goal in those four games. Unfortunately, streaks always come to an end, and the Blaine Bengals came to the complex aiming to take down the Cardinals one notch. Coon Rapids setting the pace in the first half. Grace Stevenson with a speed down the right side, fires for the far post, but the Bengals keeper, Tess Enloe, dives to make the save. Cardinals on the attack again. Molly Terabeza with a nice feed behind the defense. Stevenson again getting the ball, but Enloe comes sliding out to make the save. No score going into the half. We are midway through the second. Free kick for Molly Knobloch. It bounces in a crowd right over the keeper. Not how they drew it up, but Knobloch puts the Cardinals on the board and into the lead. But Blaine, they bounce right back. About five minutes later, ball knocked away right to Ellie Nian. She has room, lofts one that's going inside the post. It's all even with 16 minutes left to play. Well, the Bengals are going to seize the momentum from there. Kendall Stadden in the midst of the host of defenders able to find enough space to launch a left footer against the grain just inside the post again. All of a sudden, Blaine leads 2-1. to one. And they weren't done. Inside the final five, Stadden chips one behind the defense and springs Jordan Pascarella in on a breakaway. She makes it count. Three unanswered put Blaine firmly in control late in the game. Nice goal there. Well, the Cardinals are going to get back within one. Coming up here, another free kick by Knobloch. This time, Anna Kepke able to get the header on and direct it to the net with 2.43 on the clock. But that's unfortunately how it would end. Blaine's going to hold on for the 3 2 win. Yeah, Stadden's a pretty nice She's really player for very Blaine good. as, very, as very well. Good. But, yep. uh, you know, the, the Cardinals still off to a fantastic yep. start. And, uh, you know, as they lose their second game of the year, is it a coincidence that those are the two games that they have appeared on CTN? I don't know. CTN curse, nah. I, I, hate to, I hate to admit to it, but we may have something to do with it. Hopefully uh, next time we're out because we see them next week. We do. That will not be the case. Unfortunately, they dropped another one on Saturday, a tight one to Tino Grace on Saturday. Two to one. Final in that one, Rory Ritsanaya had the goal on an assist by Molly Terabeza, but still at 3-3-1, three, three, 
Um, it's, uh, it's not a bad place to be midway through the season. They, no. too, will have no. uh, some very tough games upcoming. They're at Champlain Park tonight. They will host Osseo on Thursday. And then, like I said, uh, knock on wood, uh, we'll have a, a winner for you here yes. on CTN next Tuesday. Well, the girls' hockey team has a new coach. Parents got a chance to meet him on Monday. Jim Coltis, who was the CPCR coach for the first four seasons of the co-op, stepped down in the offseason to take the head coaching job at Maple Grove. After an extensive search, the Fighting Bluebirds found a new leader to take them forward. Todd Gunnerman was at Coon Rapids High School on Monday evening to meet the parents and players. Gunnerman was the head coach at, uh, for the girls at Forest Lake for seven years run that included three conference championships, five section finals, and two trips to the state tournament. He spent last season as an assistant at Andover, a team whose only loss was in the state championship. Gutterman is excited to bring his experience to the Champlain Park Coon Rapids squad, hopefully help the Bluebirds get to that next level. When it comes to effort, there's only one option, and that's elite. And that's the one thing that I am going to push is I don't care who we play, we will never get outworked. That's my objective. Every time we hit the ice in practice, every shift we hit in the game, every time those skates hit the ice, we need an elite effort. I am going to push them beyond their limits um, and in a very positive way, but I'm going to demand a lot. Um, and that's the only way I know how to build a program. Uh, you know, you just can't, the minute you accept laziness into your program, that's when it starts going the wrong direction. Obviously, we'll have to wait a while before seeing Gutterman's team in action. The Fighting Bluebirds drop the puck on the new season November 11th at the Crick, hosting YZ. So, nothing like starting with uh, with uh, your feet in the hey, fire. YZ always not? puts a good program uh, together. And, and uh, you know, I really, I did not watch the whole thing. He spoke for a little more than a half hour. I did, But I really liked the things that he was saying. Uh, he talked about one of the things that he talked about really likes to be aggressive, likes to force the other team to make mistakes. These likes his defensemen to play downhill. These are all the same kinds of things that I enjoy when it comes to hockey. One of the greatest things that I heard in the, in the little bit that I did listen to in his last week or in his last year in Forest Lake, they scored 16 shorthanded goals and only That's gave amazing. up, only gave up six goals. Or no, they scored 22 and only shorthanded gave up and only gave up six. They were plus 16 when shorthanded. That's, plus 16 that, when that's shorthanded. Phenomenal. That's it's phenomenal. It's amazing. I, I have a, I have a good customer who was uh, was a coach in the state here for girls hockey, and I told him of the of the signing. He said, "You guys got a very very good." I'm coach. excited. Very I excited love, for him. Love the things he was saying. I really look forward to seeing what what he can do. And uh, you know, like like he said, he's going to push them. Uh, and hopefully that will that will help them get to the next level. Absolutely, and I'm I'm always excited for hockey, but uh, very excited to have Gutterman on you staff. You excited for hockey? Here's a hockey. look at what we have coming up for you. Here we're going to have a webcast of the swim meet against Centennial on Thursday, then football on Friday live at seven o'clock, and then at Spring Lake Park doubleheader boys and girls soccer on Tuesday the 28th. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. Well, I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN for the entire crew, including my man Paris behind the camera and my man Howie Shapiro to my right. I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.